Hey guys, I'm Avish and this is third video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion controls. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get going. In the second session, we have learned configuring the Android emulator and Android device and we have successfully coded and debugged the autocomplete application using Android device manager on a Pixel device. We have also learned how to bind dynamic data using a country list package that we downloaded from NuGet package manager and we have handled the events for autocomplete selection. In this session, we will focus on different type of editors and controls that are available in Sync Fusion. Though the editors are listed in the last category of this presentation, it is very important to learn editable controls as they are commonly used in day-to-day -day programming. Let's start with them before we switch to some advanced controls of Sync Fusion. We all know that any app starts with either registration, sign up or contact forms before proceeding with application usage. Hence, we will focus on editor controls in this session. In addition, I have provided a link to obtain a free community license for Sync Fusion. During the registration procedure, feel free to register and explain why you require a free Sync Fusion license. If you meet the requirements listed, the Sync Fusion team will get in touch with you and grant you the community license. Now, coming back to data editors, there are many editor controls supported by Sync Fusion, such as autocomplete, data form, combo box, mask entry, number entry, signature pad, rating, and image editors, and many more. In the previous session, we have discussed about autocomplete, and in this session, we will focus on creating different forms such as personal or contact form, sign-in feedback form that uses numerous components and controls available in the data form control. We will also use grouping validation of controls in the data form along with the annotations and editor settings. The data forms make use of editable text components, which are widely used for entering various input fields such as end user names, multi-line text for entering addresses, and password control for entering password related information. We will also use other controls like numeric and mass text editors to enter phone numbers, date of birth and price related information. We will use the other controls that are listed here as well and will wire up the validations and event actions on each of them. Let's now switch to the Visual Studio and start our coding session. I have resumed from the previous solution that we have used in earlier session for autocomplete. Feel free to create a new project by selecting data form control and the Sync Fusion template will automatically create the project and solution initialized with the data form control that is ready to use. I want to create data form control manually so that we can discuss the attributes and events that needs to wire up during the control creation. Let's right click on this project, click on manage NuGet packages. Let me stop the solution first from debugging. Let's right click on this again, click on manage NuGet packages and see that we have some updates pending. Let me select all of these packages and update them. Sync Fusion team updates the packages very frequently. So let's keep ourselves updated on these. The packages are now upgraded. Let me add Sync Fusion MAUI dot data form. Let me search for data form here. What is that? Data form and let me install this Sync Fusion data form control. It's successfully installed. Let me go to extension Sync Fusion and click on Essential Studio for .NET MAUI and launch the toolbox. Let me switch to the Solution Explorer and right click on Add New Item .NET MAUI and choose Content Page here. Let's name this form as personal information. Let's now switch from Solution Explorer to the Sync Fusion Toolbox. Notice that we have a lot of controls available under Sync Fusion Toolbox. Let me select SF Data Form Control and drag and drop to the XAML file. Please observe that the moment I dragged and dropped the file, there is a namespace created for the data form along with the assembly. That means the data form is wired up with this binding event. Let's switch back to the code and create the 
personal information class file and bind the context file to this SF data form. Let's switch back to the code. Let's create a class called contact info public class contact info. Let's use property snippets here. Property string name property string last name property string contact number email address city region postal code country phone number fax and many more let's now create a data model data view model in fact for the binding context let me create a class public class data form view model and let's use property contact info as contact info let me scroll down a bit lower let me create the constructor public data form view model and let's say this dot contact info is equal to new contact info that's it let's now switch back to the xaml file let's add the binding context here content page dot binding context with local we don't have local here let's declare the namespace xml namespace local it should point to the local file which is clr hyphen namespace colon sync fusion maui app come back here and say local colon data form view model this is how we bind the binding context from the code behind let's now bind the data object of this data form data object equal to this is a binding isn't it let's type in binding contact info that's it let's run the application now oh the application is pointing to the autocomplete stuff let me switch back Go to action.xaml file and remove autocomplete features to personal information. Let me also change the route here. Personal information. Let me restart the app. Let's add some changes to make this control working. Let me remove this label quickly. Remove the vertical stack layout as well. I will explain you about the stack layouts and other layouts in future for now let's focus on this personal information page and proceed further let me add content page dot content and wrap the sf data form inside that let's now create a save button here let's go to the toolbox and add a button let me drag and drop this button here text let me name this button as save. Notice that it is throwing an error because the content can hold only one control. So let me wrap this in a grid. Grid control. And let me create a save button. Let's correct this save button by giving some name property, which is save button. And let's give a height to this button called height request. Let me make it to 40 and then let me give vertical options as end so that the save button will be placed at the end of this form. Notice that here. Let me also give a width request so that it won't exceed 200 pixels and I'll also add some padding with bottom padding as 10 and let me add some margin as well margin to 
and we add the bottom margin as 10. Look at that. We have the personal information control ready. Unlike the typical .NET controls, Sync Fusion creates a text boxes based on binding context. This simplifies creation of forms using Sync Fusion. Anything that takes a day's time is simplified and done in less than 30 minutes. Let's now go ahead and apply some data attributes and annotations and make this form look good aesthetically. Let's now switch back to the code and add some data annotations uh, to the properties which are not having any spaces in between. For example, last name, contact number, and postal code. Let me add a data annotation here. Display name equal to last space name. I may continue this for contact number. Call it as contact number. Let me pull in this phone over here and change this as mobile. Let me just rename this as landline. Let's also group these things into different components. So we'll add a group name for all of these. Let's add name as first name and add group name is equal to name. So let me add the same group name for last name as well. And we categorize all the phone numbers as group into phone, group name, phone. Let me add this back, copy and paste this into the mobile. Let's also group the address related components. Let me rearrange these things. I may pull down the email to the bottom and keep the address related components together and copy this. Make the group name as address details for all of these. Let me remove the name and keep just the group name here. Let me add the group name as mail for email. Let's now run the application. Notice that the applied data annotations has grouped the properties accordingly. Let's now fix the overlapping problem of the data form. Let's also save some space by changing the layout and keep it neat. Let's switch back to the XAML file here and let me add some height request to 650 and vertical options to start so that we get a scroll bar before the save button and it doesn't overlap with the save button. The data form comes with a couple of layout options. The one which we are using the default one. Let me switch the layout option or layout, layout type to text input layout and save this. Let me restart the application again since we have changed the layout over here. Notice that the presentation of the form is completely changed. With this, we have successfully added the data form control and created a basic personal information form. In the next session, we will learn more data annotations and validation around the data form properties. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.